Baby Chicks come, and I'm just gonna get some real quick video because we've gotta get them in here, get them in with water and food and under the heat. So I'm gonna really quickly get them in and then I'll record some more. So we successfully have all 50 meat chickens. Uh, so far, all of them are fine. All 50 came in good, they're, they're alive, so, so far so good. I really wanted to film going into the post office and getting them for you guys, um, but I had to go into town by myself. Um, it's Friday, it's early on Friday, so I had to go in by myself, and the red light on my face is And it's raining, so I didn't want to be like filming and driving in the rain. But I got to town, I went to the post office, they had them all ready for me. Um, I took care of some other stuff I needed to do there. Got out, got out of the post office and it was raining, which was not ideal. I was kind of bummed about that. So the boxes did get a little bit wet and they have holes in them. These are how they came. This is, this had a smaller amount of chicks and then that box down there had a larger, you can see the different size. So I was really nervous because they did get a little bit wet, but I got them in the car. We had to walk about a block and I got them in the car and then turned the heat on like really high. And I was hot, but I think they were much more comfortable. Um, then I got them in the house really quickly. I already had the food and water set up. I did that this morning before I left, right after I got the call that they were here. And that way when I got back, I could put them in and get them situated. One thing that you wanna do whenever you get chicks is you wanna put them in their brooder space and you wanna take each one now some people say you don't need to do each one. We do each one. You take each one and you dip their beak in the water, at, at the waterer, and show them where their water is. Now some people say that you can dip some of them, their beaks in the water, and they'll like show the other ones or the other ones will learn from them how to get water or where the water is. But I just felt more comfortable doing all 50. It took a little bit of time, but I did two at a time, and they're doing great. They are gobbling up the water. I'm really glad I have two waterers in there, and then I have two feeders, so I'll show you guys that now. All right, so here's the setup. We got one of the traditional heat lamps just setting on top of the hardware cloth. You can see they're doing some huddling under the heat. They'll do that, and then they'll move away from the heat when they're too warm. And then we do have the heat plate under here, so they can go wherever they prefer. And then back there, you can see I've got food, I've got one green water, more food in the blue container, and more water back there. So yeah, they've got plenty of room. They're so cute. I'm sure you can hear them chirping away. There's two different colors. It's kind of hard to see in that light, but over here you can see there's two different colors. So we've got the Red Ranger and we've got the Cornish Cross. We figured we would try each. Um, we did 25 of each to see if we noticed a big difference, which ones grow out better, which ones we like the taste of better. Meat birds are still very new to us, so we figure why not try two different kinds and see if we have a preference. All right, friends, so we just jumped a week ahead. It was really two seconds for you, but a full week for me. I just wanted to go ahead and give you guys an update in this video on how the chicks are doing. So it has been one full week since they were delivered to us, and so far everything has gone really, really well. Full disclosure, we lost one chick. Um, that's never fun, but it's something that happens. We're grateful that we've only lost one, and I mean, it's just one of those things. There's not much you can do about it. We do, you can do everything right, and some of them, for whatever reason, just aren't going to survive. So we did lose that one, but everybody else, you can see behind me, is doing really, really well. One of the things that I just wanna point out about these guys, and they are our meat birds, they eat so much food. I don't remember our layers eating this much food. <laughs> I know these guys are growers, and that's the whole point. They're supposed to, eat and put on weight quickly, but holy cow, they're eating a lot. Like we have, I'll show you, two 40 pound bags and one of them is pretty much gone. So these are our two 40 pound bags of food. And as you can see, that one is pretty much empty. They have been consuming a lot of food. And here are the stars of the show. Now their heat lamp is off, it's on the floor right now because I have the brooder open so I can show you guys. Normally the heat lamp sits up on this top corner. 
of the brooder and they love it. It's nice because they have a lot of warmth right here. They have warmth with the heat plate down here and then they have options to be cooler in the back where they can be away from the heat. So that's the ideal way to set up your brooder. You wanna have both hot and cold spots for them so that they can hang out where their body needs. I don't know if you guys can see the size difference from the beginning few minutes of this video, but they are noticeably bigger. These two on top here are Red Rangers. This one down here, look at it sleeping. That is a Cornish Cross. The Cornish Cross are definitely bigger than the Red Rangers. They're growing faster for sure. They drink as much water as they eat. So I'm filling up their two waterers two to three times per day. So they definitely go through a lot of food and a lot of water. I would prefer to do hanging waterers if possible in here. Um, I just think that it might help keep, help keep them cleaner. They're constantly knocking the bedding into the waterers, which I think is mostly just frustrating for me. They still drink out of the water, but it gets clogged up with sometimes feces and bedding because the feces is mixed in with the bedding. Which brings me to my next point that I wanted to share with you guys is the bedding and how we're keeping the brooder clean. So you can see here, they get pieces in their water down in the bottom. One of the other things that I just changed is their feeder. So this red feeder that's here, I've got two of them. They're right there side by side. They're parallel to each other. They each have 28 holes, 28 access holes. So this allows for all of the chicks. There's more than one hole per chick. So there's plenty of space for all of them to eat at the same time if they wanted to. The feeders were definitely one of the biggest problems that we've had and we'll come up with a more long-term solution. The ones that I purchased, um, they were pretty affordable. They were from Amazon. I think they were like $9 a piece. I'll link them below. But it, it's very important for all of the birds to have access to food at, at their leisure. So being able to allow them to eat when they need to and having enough space for all of the birds at one time is really important. I don't know if these feeders will last that long, but they're a good solution for now. Um, when we put them out in the chicken tractors, we'll be using a different type of feeder and we'll show you that then. I might end up, you know, coming up with our own feeder. I like the, the ones that Sow the Land uses where he just like basically cuts a PVC pipe in half lengthwise. I really like those. So maybe we'll go to something like that eventually, but for now, these definitely work. Hopefully I'm not having to fill feeders two, three times a day anymore. Hopefully I can just fill this once a day, once every other day and a half or so. Um, the chickens seem to enjoy it. They have a lot more room for everybody to eat and look at how lazy they are. Look at these little heifers. They literally don't even stand up. They just sit down. Those ones over there, let's be fair. Those over there are standing. But look at these little fatties. Just sitting on the ground, eating eating all their food, little heifers, getting big and chickeny for me. <laughs> and then there's that one that wants to jump on top. This is part of the mess that they've been doing. They have discovered they're big enough now to jump on top of the heat plate. They started to poop all over it, which is great. So I do need to clean that off. For bedding, the bedding you can see right now is a little bit messy. There is some feces and urine. Um, on the top layer. What I've been doing is adding to it um, every few days and just doing what is basically a deep litter method. So the deep litter method just means that rather than cleaning out and scooping out all of the bedding, we're just going to continue to layer it and allow it to, it would compost over time. Hopefully we won't have them in the, this brooder long enough for it to start composting. Maybe a little, it'll start breaking down. But in general, in here it won't compost that much. Um, but what we'll do after we're done with it, after we have that nice thick layer of bedding and organic matter, we'll go ahead and take all the chicks out, put them on pasture at that time, and then we'll clean out the entire brooder and we'll take all of that organic matter in here and put it out in our compost pile. They should hopefully go out on pasture, not next week, That'll be, they'll be three weeks old next week, at the end of next week, and then the following week at the end they'll be four weeks old. 
I'm, we're really, really hopeful that they're going to be able to go out on pasture at four weeks. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to, but we're hopeful because on that fourth week of their life, on that Tuesday, we have our 20 guinea fowl coming in and I need somewhere to brood the guinea fowl before they go out on pasture. Now we can, I have set up a temporary brooder setup if we need to do that, um, that's totally fine. I can do that temporary brooder setup for a little bit, um, but then I really need this brooder to put them in, to put the guineas in. So hopefully our little chicks will be ready to go out on pasture. We'll be running them in two chicken tractors. We are going to do Siskovich style chicken tractors. Jose and I looked at the different styles. Um, we weighed the options and we both really like the Siskovich style tractors. So we will share that build and the information about those tractors when we share that video with you guys. Um, that's gonna be coming up soon because we gotta get those built. And then, let's see, next week on Friday, Jose and Junior are going to be moving our laying flock up here. So the layers are gonna move from Florida up to Tennessee officially to the farm. So we have, I think, 26 chickens. <laughs> All of them are coming up here. We are, they're moving the OG chicken tractor with them. That will be used temporarily if both of our Siskovich tractors aren't complete by that time. Um, but hopefully they are because the Siskovich are a lot lighter than our first chicken tractor that we built. Um, so yeah, there's lots of lots of exciting stuff coming up. Stay tuned. I just wanted to make sure I showed you guys a chicken update. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing. There is going to be so much content coming up. I mean, we're starting a farm from scratch and this is all new to us. So there's going to be lots of fun and interesting content, lots of learning involved, and you guys can learn along with us. So stay tuned. Thanks so much for joining us on the farm today, and we'll see you in the next one.